What's happening guys and girls, Akronator here, and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft Dungeon Overview. This episode will be continuing through the Ice Crown dungeons, specifically by going through the Pit of Saren. I'll be running you through it with my paladin you see here, so with that being said, let's dive straight into it. As you will hopefully recall from last episode, the Knights of the Ebon Blade and the Argent Crusade have teamed up to unleash their final assault on the Frozen Throne. But before we can take on Arthas himself, we must first ensure that the hordes of undead he commands won't be able to aid their king. As such, we must must first take out the Lich King's infrastructure before bringing the big boss himself to justice. Up to this point we have already taken out the Scourge's main power supply in the Forge of Souls, and now we march headlong into the Pit of Saren, the main mining operation of the undead. This is one of the richest quarries in all of Northrend for gathering the crystallized blood of the old god Yogg Saren, and the Scourge has made good use of those they've captured as slave laborers. It's our job to tear down their operation, free the enslaved that still live, and kill the head overseer of the mine, Scourge Lord Tyrannus. The Pit of Saren is a level 80 dungeon with a heroic mode located inside the upper reaches of Ice Crown Citadel. Just like the Forge of Souls, this entrance can't be reached without a flying mount, because you'll need to fly up to the balcony to the right of the raid entrance on the ground level. Once you fly up to the Argent Forces above, just head to the room inside the Citadel on your left and walk towards the Meeting Stone at the center of the room. The specific entrance we'll be using this time is on the right, and the portcullis will again be labeled for its respective instance if you get confused. Garfrost is an ice giant that has been risen in service to Arthas in order to act as the primary blacksmith for the Scourge's armories. It takes him mere minutes what would take a team of smiths days to accomplish, and as such he is risen rapidly through their vile ranks. Needless to say, he's a prime target for our little revolts we have going on here. There will be a few ads in the same area as the boss, but don't worry too much about pulling them before the boss since that may not be possible depending on everyone's positioning. They're all incredibly weak, so just pull the boss and AoE them down for the first few seconds before continuing on like a normal tank and spank. Garfrost will occasionally cast permafrost, slowing and damaging all players in his line of sight for a short period of time. The best way to avoid this is to get behind the serenite boulders he'll throw every now and then to break the line of sight. You will have to be careful if he's throwing the boulder at you, however, since it will damage everyone nearby when it lands. So make sure to run away from your group, but not too far. You don't want to make it impossible for them to get behind it when they need to. The last bit is that the boss has a conical attack, so the tank should face him away from the rest of the group. This is probably one of the easier bosses we've covered in quite a while, so it's more or less a tank and spank with a few positioning mechanics thrown in for good measure. The lead taskmaster for the slave miners in the pit is known as Crick, a gnomish necromancer that's gotten too big for his boots. He thinks, just because he has Ick, a massive undead horror to ride on top of, that he's invincible. Let's take him down a peg and show him how tall he really stands. Again, there will be a few ads in the surrounding area around the boss for this one, but this time you'll actually want to try and take care of them before engaging. As for the fight itself, the casters will want to stand a bit further back to avoid an AoE. Ick will go down first, and then Crick will surrender before dying, so so just keep that in mind. There will also be the periodic placing of a poison pool on the ground, just run out of the green vomit and you'll be fine. Similarly, look out for something called explosive barrage that will chase players around with these little arcane bubbles that deal AoE damage. Just don't be next to them when they pop. The last bit is that Ick will pick out a specific target and chase them for a couple of seconds. His speed is decreased by half, but his damage is doubled, so you really don't want to be near him if you're the unlucky soul. Tyrannus is a death knight that was promoted to the rank of Scourge Lord after defeating the ice giant Garfrost and providing Arthas with the greatest blacksmith in all of Northrend. Besides the new position of authority, Tyrannus was also given a frostworm as his not-so-noble steed. He's dubbed the beast Rhymefang and oversees not only the entirety of the pit from above, but he also guards the entrance to the Halls of Reflection. Leading up to the Scourge Lord, you'll have to make your way through this hallway with a few trash mobs and falling icicles. It's probably best if you just pull everything and kite them all the way to the end of the path just before the boss. I know it won't be as easy as you see me doing now, but it shouldn't be impossible if your tank and healer are halfway competent. As for the boss himself, you will have to worry about Rhymefang since it will be attacking players as directed by Tyrannus. I'd recommend taking down the drake first before focusing entirely on the boss. It's just easier that way. 
The last major ability you'll have to look out for is something called Overlord's Brand, where all damage dealt by the branded player is mirrored to the boss's primary target. Similarly, all healing performed by the branded player is mirrored onto the boss. I'd recommend dispelling it if you can, otherwise just hold off on going crazy until the brand wears off. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, maybe even subscribe. Links to my social media, and specifically my new Discord server, can be found in the description below for any of you that are interested in such things. And as for the comment question, why do you think the Scourge decided not to turn the slave laborers into undead? I mean, I suppose it's nice and all to try to demoralize the enemy, but they missed out on the opportunity to gain even more potential soldiers if and when we came knocking on their front door. Instead, we regained good fighters we thought we had lost. Anyways, that's all the time I've got for today, so until next time, don't die.